Well, hello. Today I'm going to be making a leather phone case. I had to replace my phone and of course I have a problem. I've already popped a video up on hand sewing a leather phone case. In this video I'm going to be using a sewing machine. So here's my phone and it's obviously quite a long one. And what I want to do is use some of this nice hatch leather. And I've got an off cut here. And what I've done is I have sewn down one side of it only. And then I've just put a peg on the other side. So basically you get like a, a loop of leather. Putting that over my phone, what I'm trying to do is get the width right. With a long phone case, obviously you want to protect the phone and not have it dropping out the case. But at the same time, because it's longer, there's a lot more like friction holding it in. So there's a risk that it become a real struggle to pull your phone out. So what I'm trying to do, and it is a little bit of a guesstimate, is take account, obviously, of the thickness of the phone. Bear in mind the stretch of the leather, because it will stretch over time when it's warm in your pocket. And when it's used a lot, obviously, making it so this will be loose enough for it to go up and down. So what I can now do, put a line similarly on the other side. It's just to give an indication of where that seam line is going to be. I can now cut out my pieces, knowing that in broad terms, that's the sort of width that I want. So I'm now just measuring between the actual sew and seam that I put in and the line that I drew and it's nine centimetres. With this particular phone it's a Samsung S10 Plus. So I'm going to make my seams exactly nine centimetres apart. Place my little scrap on here. I'm going to have my seams coming in. I can trim this later but I, if I do my seams at around about five, six, seven, about seven millimetres, that gives me a bit of trimming margin. So I have a back and I have a front. So to make a credit card pocket, I need a piece of leather, which is 75 by 95. And I need to, because I'm using a hatch grain leather, I need to make sure that I keep my hatch grain going in the same direction. So 75 is the width. Again using this little silver marker pen I can just do a little dot. If this was plain leather I could just be using my little all point all here scratch all. But on a hatch grain leather it's more difficult to see the point so I'm using a silver marking pen. So that's my width. I want it to be 95 high. That just makes it a bit easier to pull the card out. So I'm just using a refillable marker pen. So this is an acrylic Montana marker pen filled with Fibing's professional leather dye dark brown in this case and I'm just going over my raw edges. You could obviously skive this by hand. I've done it on a skiving machine as I have one. So I'm just marking on a stitch line using a pair of dividers. So this panel will be going on here. So I've marked in four little tiny dots where this front piece will line up. I can now put my ruler along dot to dot and put it down there and then just with a French skive making sure I don't overshoot just cut a little bit of the leather surface off so I get a better glue adhesion with this French shave so that's one of these tools which um, has a sharp end here it's quite useful for this sort of thing. I've just used my Bucklehurst logo and I've stamped it in the front here. 
Now to make the stamp impression take, I wet the leather from the reverse side and let it soak through. I think I probably was a bit generous with the water because it soaked through rather a lot, but hopefully that would dry off. The other thing you can do to help make the stamp impression take is if you put a bit of softer leather underneath, it can be any old scrap of leather, you'll find that your stamp goes in deeper when you press it in. So I was using a two ton press to put this stamp on, a one ton would have been perfectly sufficient for a small item like this, but having the softer backing leather as well, you'll find you'll get a better impression. So the glue I'm using for this part is Rainier Aquilim 315, which is a water-based glue. Basically the hammering helps the glue to bond. I have skived and thinned my sides on both pieces. So again, I have a machine, so I've done it on a machine, but you could do it obviously by hand. I am on my post bed sewing machine. Now this doesn't have a reverse. So I have turned my work around and I'm going to do four or five stitches at the top of the pocket here and then turn the work around. There we are. Let's leave the needle down and then I can lift the foot. It's a roller wheel foot. So this is top and bottom roller feed on this machine. Foot back down. I'm keeping the wheel on the thicker bit of the leather for this run. I have a little edge guide which will help a little bit. I find this um, top roller on the machine and the bottom roller underneath instead of a conventional feed dog, very good where you've got a flat sew like this. So I'm using bonded nylon thread and therefore I can melt it and make it globule to seal it off. So again, same glue, Renia Aquilim 315, applying it to both surfaces, let it go off and then press those surfaces together. And again, hit all the seams with my poly hammer. So this particular one is a 4X712. I'm very carefully getting these lined up as best I can. They will have a final trim. Then I can just hammer this all around to make sure that glue really bites in. So the glue's dried down each side and along the bottom. I haven't stitched it yet, but what I have just done is put my phone into it and just roughly cut the top to length. So that is now trimmed to length. I'll probably round those corners off a tiny bit. So I've just used my little U-punch here and taken out like a finger section. I'm going to just trim up the sides. So I'm just going to take off the absolute minimum here just to really get those sides nice and straight so it's literally like a millimeter of fat so i'm just going to be doing some back stitches first of all there we are and then turning the work around and I'm going to go around I'll just make sure I'm going to hit the same holes yep <laughs> I'll do this bit by hand I've got about 10 stitches here and I think it would look a bit untidy if I don't hit exactly the same holes I'm just making sure that does okay I've got my roller foot wheel on the inside, so it's on the flatter, thicker leather. I'll now use my guide as a little bit of a guide. I'm going to need to adjust that, so I will do that quickly. It's a little bit fiddly adjusting these guides. So I'm using an Allen key, but um, that does hold it. And it is quite useful. It's a little drop down guide.
I'm doing a very fine stitch. I always think of this a bit like, because it's a round curve here, a bit like man sawing if ever you do any woodwork. You have to keep turning your piece with every sort of like stitch. And I use my knee to sort of lift the roller foot just to take the pressure off. Okay, slightly annoying when this sort of thing happens. I ran out literally on the last couple of stitches. So the last couple of stitches are double stitched, but I don't really feel for something like a phone case that gets a lot of use, that is quite enough. So I'm going to pop this extra bobbin in and just give it a little bit more. So I'm doing like the last 10 stitches and I'm just double stitching them all just to get this properly set. I'll clean that up but basically I've gone back 10 uh, just to make sure that's really strong up there. I've just been tapping down all my stitches with my mallet and what I'm going to do now is get the silver pen off. Now I normally find one can sort of wash this off. So just a bit of water on a rag. It will mark the leather, but that will soon dry through, I hope. <laughs> if not, I'll end up marking it all. So get those silver marks off. You can get the pens where you apply another second pen and it actually helps by sort of diluting it totally. I may give them a tiniest round in places. So I'm going to do that. The other thing I'll do is on the back, you can hardly see the stitching, but you get the odd little place where it just shows a bit of the sort of leather color coming through. So I'm just going to touch it with the dye pen. Sometimes I use a felt pen for this and it's just enough to get rid of any sort of underlying leather color. It just makes it look a bit neater. So the moment of truth, does it fit? <laughs> it will loosen up, I'm telling myself, if it's tight. Oh, a bit tight, but it is going in. Okay, that's in. It's um, a very snug fit at the moment, but a little bit of manipulation. And I'm going to put a tool down the inside. So I'm just using my bone folder here to get in in case there's a little bit of glue drift over. So that's my bone folder. This one's a bit of, I think, dare I say it, it's just a bit of baleen. Obviously wouldn't buy that these days. But as it's here, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to see it in a good life. All right, let's try again. Oh yeah, that's, that's happy. That is nice because it's um, gone in very happily. It's sitting in there nicely protected. If it falls that way, it's got some protection. It falls obviously any other way. It's got a fair degree of protection. Got my credit card holder on the front here, which will be very useful. Just holds, you know, a note and a credit card, something like that. And yep, phone comes out, phone goes in. Just what I wanted in a nice bit of hat. It would match one of my wallets. So that's my phone case done. Nice project. Obviously you can do all of this by hand. I have put up a video on stitching by hand and of making a phone case by hand. But you can probably see with the sewing machine, I've got very fine stitches and it is obviously a lot quicker. That's bonded nylon thread, so there's no way it's going to rot. It's neat on both sides. People get right with that. Oh, you're going to have rough on the reverse, but actually you can see there, stitching is fine on both sides. So that will get a lovely pattern there with use. So there you are. So yeah, protective phone at last. I get a bit paranoid about dropping something on it or 
dropping it out of my pocket, at least now. Armoured case, leather case, except for it's got a bit of protection around it. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Okay, bye then.